that's our goal in order to talk about the data access layer. What we want to do is talk about how to um, uh, programmatically retrieve records from the database, how to do paging, uh, meaning that you can re read the you know, first 10 records, then the next 10 records, then the next 10 records, and so on, uh, how to update records um, in the database, uh, and then uh, go on to do more complex things, like, for example, be able to use AND and OR uh, where clauses, uh, use order by, and then, of course, you want to be able to delete uh, records. So there are a number of things that we can do programmatically over here. Now, this, in this particular example, what I'm not going to go through and discuss a specific uh, code customization over here. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk about generally what uh, we want to do over here uh, in order to uh, be able to show you how to programmatically access this whenever you need it. Let's say, for example, you're trying to make some customizations in order to process some records or update them programmatically. By default, Iron Speed Designer already produces most of the code that's necessary in order to essentially retrieve those records, show them to the user, and be able to update and, and save them as necessary. But if you need to be able to customize them, this is the, the session that will help you in order to accomplish that. Um, in terms of the basics uh, of the data access layer, what's important to r realize is that what we do is utilize classes or objects, if you will, in order to query the database. And these classes specifically related to accessing the database are there are two classes that are generated automatically for you uh, in Iron Speed Designer applications. Uh, the first one is a class that is going to be named based on your table, based on your database table. So let's say, for example, if you have a customer's table, you will get a class called customer's record. And this uh, we generally refer to in not only in this presentation but on in, our docu in our documentation as the record class. This class is really an object for a row of data from the database. So in fact, if you look at a record class, uh, if you have a handle or an instance of customer's record, uh, then you could do rec dot first name, for example, and that will allow you to retrieve the first name from that customer's record. So every, um, all, the, every field in your database will have a property uh, available to you as part of that record. Secondly, uh, keep in mind, though, one important thing to note about this uh, record class is that it is different from the record control class, which is a user interface control. The record control class reflects uh, a row uh, or a record control uh, that is presented uh, to you on, uh, on a web page. That's a user interface control. It's not necessarily the same thing as the object uh, that is part of essentially an object that refers to a row from the database. So we may, in our documentation, other times refer to something called a record control or a record control class. Make sure that that is a different class than a record class. A second class, and also a very important class that we generate, is Uh, a second class that we generate is a class uh, called uh, the table class. And typically, that is generated with the prefix of the name of the table, let's say customers, for example, followed by a suffix called uh, the word table. And then in the case of a view, uh, it will follow the same pattern, except the suffix will be view. So in, if you have a you know, active customers uh, view in your database, there will be a class called Active Customers View uh, that is available to you in your in your application. And the same thing goes for a query, a named query that you define in Iron Speed Designer. This is uh, for our purpose over here. We're going to refer to this as a, the Table Class. Uh, again, this is different than the Table Control Class, which is a user interface uh, control. And then if you really think about it, what this table class does is really stores or allows you to access the schema information for the database uh, table, including any column uh, information, including you know, what is the type of the column, if there is any formatting that needs to be done, and so on. This is all essentially handled by the table class. And there are a number of methods to retrieve, save, or delete records that are available on this, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, class. Now let's dive down into each one of these classes a little bit more, and let's talk about what exactly ca you can do with it. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, the record class allows you and contains a number of properties that allows you to quickly access the various fields that are available to you in your database 
uh, in your database uh, table. So for example, if you have an instance of an employee's record called emprec, uh, in this case, the employee record dot first name will refer uh, to the property, will refer to the first name from that particular row. And obviously, because this is a string field in your database, it'll also be a string uh, data type available to you inside of uh, Iron Street Designer. Similarly, if you have a date field in your database, uh, we correctly map that to a date object in, uh, in, um, in um, uh, VB.NET or in C Sharp so that you can do all of the operations necessary on that using that particular date object. And similarly, if you have an order record dot order amount, it'll be currency and quantity would be numeric and, and, and so on. So this is one of the biggest advantages because you have this object uh, that refers to uh, the row in uh, your database. And then some of the common methods that you can do is you can save. And save is also used both not only when you are creating the record initially uh, or when you are updating. So this save method uh, has a dual purpose, both initial as well as an update. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you can just call the delete method of that record, and that record will be deleted. And uh, keep in mind, though, that when you are doing save and when you are doing delete, you are actually within a transaction boundary. So technically, the save and the delete are not going to be committed to the database until after the commit transaction takes, uh, takes place. And then you have other uh, facilities available, like, for example, in order to retrieve the ID, you can just do a get ID. Uh, you may also refer to it, uh, for example, you may have a customer ID field, so you could always do rec.customerID, but that just gives, you an ID, uh, just gives you the actual ID itself, like 37, for example. But in some cases, you have composite keys where you are not just, you know, for example, let's say there is a t uh, database table where the first name and the last name make up a composite key. Then what get ID will do is it will return a key value pair of both of those fields, and this is useful in order to essentially reread the record back again or do some operations on that record. So we'll refer to that uh, later on in this presentation as well. And then there are a couple of other functions uh, that are useful. There are many other methods that are available, but parse and format uh, are two important uh, methods that allow you to uh, you know, take the data from a user input. Let's say somebody types in, you know, January, you know, one dash, uh, you know, one dash 2009. Uh, well, what we want to be able to do is take that when the user types that into a text box. We want to be able to parse that and store that as a date. And so the function that actually does that parsing and does the conversion from that string string to the native value, native value in this case being a date value, uh, is a function called parse. And parse takes into account all of the issue, uh, items related to, for example, culture settings. So if you call parse when you are in a different culture, uh, that particular culture is going to be used in order to parse that. And if there are any errors, they will be reported as part of parse effectively uh, from there. So if you start with, you know, in the, in the English US culture, if you start with 2009-1-1, parse will actually return an error uh, at that point in time. Uh, and similarly, format does the opposite of parse. Format will actually take the native value and then format it into a string uh, display so that it can be displayed on the, on the user interface. And again, it, it, taking the date example, uh, using the current uh, culture settings, uh, you'll be able to convert uh, you know, a date into 1-1-2009 you know, or you know, whatever additional display format that you have specified. Uh, for that. And in the case of the format, we use a standard Microsoft uh, display format uh, strings that are available, uh, available to you. So that's about the record class, and we'll see some examples of this as we go forward. The table class uh, basically allows you to query the database. So think of the table class as your way in order to retrieve records uh, from the database. And it contains a number of shared properties and shared methods. You're not going to be using an instance of the table class. Uh, you're going to be using the shared properties and the shared methods in order to be able to access the data uh, from the database. Uh, number one thing, that it contains a property for each column. So if you have, for example, again, back to our example of customers table, 
If I do customer's table dot first name, it gives me access to all of the column or all of the column uh, type that is available to me. So I could do, for example, customer's table dot first name dot uh, type, and that will give me the data type, like, for example, whether it's a string or whether it's a date or whatever uh, the different format is. So this is a good way for you to essentially, if you need to, uh, be able to get the schema information uh, for that particular uh, column. Additionally, we have a number of shared methods, and these are very important methods, and we'll again discuss them in a little bit more detail as we go forward here. Uh, there are a number of methods called, uh, for example, the ones that are most useful are all shared methods. Uh, they are, like, for example, have get record and get records, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. We also have delete and delete records. Uh, the difference between one and the other is one is just operates on one record versus multiple records. Then you have get count and get columns. Uh, get count is an important function that we use all the time. Get count, what it does basically is given a query, uh, it essentially does a select count star. And the reason why we need to do that is we need to calculate, for example, you know, uh, how many records are there in a, uh, that are returned by a query so that we can display the pagination as an example and say, you know, page 1 of 13 or page 1 of 37 and, and, and so on. And you can also uh, call another function called get columns, which allows you to kind of go through all of the columns in a sequential manner. Uh, so you can say for i equal to, you know, 0, i less than get columns. Uh, here is, uh, you know, you can operate on the columns uh, kind of uh, by position as opposed to by, by, by name. Okay, so that's about the table class. Uh, why use these record or table classes instead of, and why not just go write your own select query uh, and go straight to, to the database? Number one, uh, there are many reasons uh, for you to do that, but number one, uh, when you use these classes, like for example, let's say you use uh, the get records function, what happens? Well, the first and foremost thing that happens is when you get the results back, the, uh, the results or rows from the database are returned as objects. So in this case, for example, if you have a customer's table dot get records, you're going to get an array of customer records. And this is an important thing so that you can operate on those records without having to worry about positional information about what column uh, is uh, being returned. If you change the, the query, if you change the, the view, uh, then now your position number may change. Let's say, for example, instead of the first name being the, the third field, it may become the fourth field or may become the second field. So you don't have to worry about it based on positional information. You can essentially operate them as record objects. And then each field is also converted back into its own native type so that you don't have to worry about based on the culture information and so on, uh, whether this is a date, whether this is a string, whether this is a currency, and so on and so forth. So the objects are There were some, hang on just one second. OK, can you hear me? OK, sorry about that. I got some voice in the background saying my entry is not valid. I don't know what that means. OK, hopefully all of you can hear me. If you cannot, please let us know. If, if you can, it's OK. But if you cannot, please let us know. Um, support. So the next thing uh, that I want to talk about is some of the reasons why you want to use record or table classes. Uh, an important item uh, also is that the record and the table classes support paging. Uh, meaning that you can actually request the, uh, you know, page 3 uh, of page 37, for example. What this allows you to do is essentially retrieve only the records from the database that are relevant to being displayed on your screen and not have to worry about retrieving, let's say, if you have a million records or 10 million records in the database, you're not going to need to uh, um, uh, retrieve all 10 million records and do the paging inside of, in, in your memory. And in, in terms of paging, uh, keep in mind that paging is done differently by different database products. So for example, Oracle uses a, has a facility called Ronum. And so what we do is we automatically use database specific way in order to do paging. Uh, unfortunately, uh, SQL Server did not have Ronum in 2000 and 2005. They have something similar to that in 2008. 
uh, but you have uh, the ability to effectively then go back and, and add that. So we actually do the paging uh, for each database uh, in a different way, and that is all handled for you, and you don't have to worry about it. Another thing is that we also support foreign key expansion. So for example, uh, in certain cases, you may want to search based on a foreign key that is given rather than actually an ID. Typically, this is done from a where clause inside of your, uh, inside of your uh, panel wizard. So you might say employee ID equal Mohiuddin. Well, what is em employee ID would never be Mohiuddin. It will be, you know, whatever, 48 or 97 or something to that effect. Well, how do we expand that and how do we effectively do that? Well, that is automatically handled by get, uh, get records on the table object uh, when you use what is called uh, foreign key expansion. Uh, we also support order by, either by ID or DFKA, meaning display foreign key as. And one of the important things to realize is that whenever I am retrieving records, I may want it sorted for, for my purpose, for example, based not on, not on the ID, not by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but by a string field, which is a foreign key as. So I want all of the A last names first, and then the B last names, and then the C last names. So order by also respects the display foreign key as expansion in order to sort your records uh, by that. Uh, database open connection, uh, closed connections are uh, handled automatically for you. And then we also do some amount of automatic caching. It's probably not going to be as extensive as N-Hibernate or as some of the other uh, products that are out there, uh, but it certainly does some amount of caching so that you do not have to worry about essentially reading the data again and again from, from the database um, uh, there. Uh, we also automatically, depending on whether you have used inline SQL or stored procedures, we will automatically use either inline SQL or stored procedure unbeknownst to you, basically. So when you do get records, uh, what you don't need to worry about is that if you use stored procedures, we're going to call that get records eventually is going to call us the stored procedure in order to, uh, in order to retrieve those records. A and it is going to be as efficient as uh, the calls that are made from, uh, from your uh, generated application. And similarly, if you're using inline SQL, that's what get records will do. And then, of course, you do not need to know uh, SQL. So these are all of the advantages that you have uh, available when you use the record and the table uh, classes for you. A quick example uh, for you, just to see the equivalence. So if you have something like select star from customers where country equal USA and order by state in ascending order, uh, and then you further want to clarify that uh, query, there is no SQL syntax for this thing, but you want to say return 10 records from page 17, well, how can you specify that in, in uh, you cannot do that in SQL, but how can you do that using the data access layer? Well, what you can do is you essentially have to have the right three lines where you initialize the where string, like in this case, country equal quote USA quote, uh, and then you create an order by object, which is essentially use the state column uh, in ascending order, and then you simply call the get records function. And you can see kind of uh, what I've done is highlighted in yellow and green uh, the different areas uh, to show you how those are essentially passed by. So you, no lo you don't need to do select star from customers where. It's automatically done for you when you call the uh, dot get records. And uh, you simply specify the where string. You uh, specify the order by object. And you specify the page number. Page number is zero base, so that's why if you want page 17, uh, you will actually specify 16 there, and then you want 10 records, uh, which is the fourth arg argument that is specified over there. Okay, back to some of the other uh, basics over here, and then we'll go into specific uh, issues related to get records. Uh, keep in mind that transactions, start, end, and commit are always needed in order to access the database. Uh, that is uh, always required. It's called the transaction boundary. Uh, in technical terminology, so you always have to do any database access, whether you're calling get records, delete, save, or anything like that, must be in a transaction boundary. So just one thing to note, basically. When you are actually doing certain operations within a click handler, for example, in a button, like let's say you are doing it in a save button click handler, what's important to know is that the transaction boundary has automatically been created for you, 
And you can look at that in the page code behind. So if you look at the Save button under Square Core Click, we will actually uh, you know, start a transaction boundary and end a transaction boundary. So anything that you're doing within that click handler, you don't have to actually initiate the transaction. Uh, but otherwise, if you're doing outside of the click handlers, you, of course, have to do your own transaction boundary uh, when you are accessing uh, the database. And you can, of course, can do a number of get, save, delete, and any other operations over there, all part of the same transaction. And then the commit is only required, of course, if you're saving or updating. Otherwise, you just do a begin transaction and an end transaction. And one note uh, to all of your developers out there, make sure you always handle exceptions, because there could be a variety of exceptions that are reported when you are uh, accessing the database. The database may have gone offline. Uh, the database uh, may have been updated by another user uh, while you have been modifying the records and, and so on. So always important to handle exceptions and then report them back to the, uh, to the user. How does the transaction boundary code look like? Well, what we have done is we have created a utility set of classes and methods. So all you need to do is you need to call dbutils.starttransaction and dbutils.commit transaction and, oops, uh, commit transaction rollback transaction and end transaction. Those, so those are the functions that you need to do, and you can do them in a try-catch block. I'm showing you bb.net code, but C-sharp code would look uh, pretty much the same, except add semicolons at the end um, and change the dims, basically, here. Uh, but generally, um, uh, this is what you need to do in order to essentially have a transaction, uh, transaction uh, boundary. Um, Let's now look at the get records, and then I'm going to uh, close this session out and take some questions. So there are many different versions of get record and get records, and we'll talk about each one of them very quickly over here. There are four variations of get record. Get record, as you know, will return uh, one record uh, at a time, basically. And you can specify, essentially, an ID, uh, either as a string value, and we'll go through that in a little bit more detail over here, uh, but they're essentially what's important to realize is that there are four different methods, and they return only one record. And um, if multiple matches are done by the where clause, let's say, for example, if you say get record where country equal the United States, and there are, let's say, about you know 100 records for that, uh, what will happen basically is that only the first record will actually be uh, uh, returned. And the definition of which one is the first record is up to the database. So there is no guarantee which record will be returned, and every call to get record may be actually returned a different record. And then when you get the value back, you can check to make sure that it is either uh, it is a valid object, make sure that it is not nothing uh, or null uh, in C sharp, uh, or it will be a record object. And then once you, once you check for that error condition, then you can continue on uh, from that point using it. Let's look at each one of the various ones. Uh, what's important are the get record functions that take an ID are two of the very important functions over here. And what it does basically is allows you to essentially get an updatable record. If you are updating the e a database, uh, you must use a get record uh, in order to so in order to get an updatable or a mutable record here. This is the only way in order to update the database. Uh, because what the get record with the ID does is will correctly retrieve the record and all of the fields uh, and set that up so that you can update that field uh, appropriately. Uh, all other get record or get records called uh, retrieved non-updatable records. Those records will not be updatable, and if you call dot .save on it, you will get an error on, uh, on that. There are two variations that of ID. One is uh, that takes... Uh, uh, just a ID as a string, so you could do you know customer stable dot get record with the value 37, and will return you know whatever the ID 37 is. Regardless of the data type uh, the, for that key, uh, you would essentially specify that as a string. Uh, and then uh, the other option is uh, when you take it as a key value pair, and this is useful for composite keys. Uh, like, for example, when you are uh, getting, uh, retrieving a whole bunch of records and then you uh, using get records and updating one at a time. Uh, and you can do that by essentially calling rec.getid, which will uh, pass in the composite key. Let's say if there's a first name and last name, it, makes, it passes it as a key value, uh, key value uh, pair. I just abbre abbreviated customer stable to CT over here in this example just to show you um, so I can fit everything on the on, on this page. 
Um, there are other variations of get record, uh, and one that takes a where string and an optional order by clause. And in this particular case, uh, it takes any where string. Uh, it will return a non-updatable record, so do not call save on that. Uh, and it, it takes an optional order by clause. And here are some examples. So you can say get record employee ID equal to 37. In this particular case, I quoted the 37. So you can say equal quote 37 quote. Obviously, if it's a numeric field, you don't need to quote. But whatever the SQL syntax is, that's all that uh, you need to do over here. And, so, and you can do uh, a more complex uh, statement, like you can say employee ID equal 37 or state equal California. So in this particular case, you simply, what we do is we take the string and we pass it straight uh, to, uh, to SQL Server or Oracle uh, or your other, data, other databases, and that's how uh, we actually execute that. And you can use other operators like like, for example, and use percent and others uh, that I've shown you over here uh, in your where string. So in effect, that where string it will exactly be the SQL syntax that you would use when you are executing a select statement uh, in, uh, in, uh, in your database. Get records uh, are, is similar to get record, obviously, but the only difference is that it returns an array of record objects. So in this particular case, rather than just returning one record, like get record does, it returns an array. And get records also has a number of variations. Uh, most of them are similar except the last one. Uh, all, the first three of them all take a where clause as a string, uh, and then may take additional arguments like order by and page index and page size, but while the fourth one takes a, the where clause as an object. And there are advantages and disadvantages of the where clause as an object, and we'll talk about that in a minute over here. Um, so let's focus on the, where, uh, the one with the takes a string. It takes any where string, very similar to the where uh, uh, get record uh, call that I showed you earlier. Uh, they, of course, will return non-updatable records. And the get record would just take the where string or the where string and the order by will return all matching records. And so there is no limit to them. So obviously, if you have a million records, uh, you're going to have a problem over there. So get records uh, without a paging uh, indicator uh, is something that you should be very careful about using. You don't want to essentially call that on a large databases, uh, but you can certainly, if you know that you only have you know, 10 or 20 or 50 uh, things, you can use get records uh, in that uh, case. And here is a sample code that shows you. So what you can do is you can say dim my records as customer record and uh, an array of customer records, uh, customer's record objects. And then you simply do customer stable dot get records with the country equal USA. Uh, I did not quote USA, so there's a slightly slight error in the syntax there. Um, and then you can basically check um, uh, error check to make sure that my records is not, not is nothing. Uh, and then you can essentially simply go through for each record in my records, and you can do whatever you want in that. And you simply would then do rec dot company name or rec dot first name, and so on. Uh, in order to uh, in order to access any of the fields for each of the records, so this is just a sample code that shows you how to use get records. Similarly, uh, you have uh, another version of get records which takes a page index and a page size, and it still takes the same where string. Page index is zero based, as we talked about earlier. Page size is the number of records to return, uh, and again, it's non-updatable records, and then returns only the page size records uh, from the, the page number that is given. So in this particular case, if you look at, for example, if you want to retrieve page 4, 50 records, then your call would be essentially get records, uh, country equal to USA, nothing or null uh, for the purpose of order by, meaning that use the default sorting available in the database. And then I would say 3, because if I want page number 0 based, so 0 is the first page, uh, one, two, three would be the fourth page, and then the 50 records. We automatically will call the sort procedure if necessary. We'll automatically do the paging for you and retrieve only those 50 records. We will not return 200 records and then chop it off to give you the 151st to 200 record, uh, basically. And then you can, of course, you know, go through for each record <laughs> once you do the error checking, uh, each record, and, and do your stuff 
uh, in that uh, in that uh, in that code. Um, the where clause version of get records. We'll talk about that here. Uh, last uh, couple of slides before I take questions here. Um, and the where clause object and other parameters will be exactly the same as before. So let's talk about what the where clause object looks like. Uh, the where clause object. One of the important things about that is an alternative to where string gives you more flexibility with operators and values uh, so that you don't have to know the SQL syntax when you're doing it. And sometimes your fields contain uh, you know, uh, characters like space, for example. Let's say if you named your field first space name, uh, then you, using them in a where string becomes a problem because then you need to know the specific syntax of your, of your uh, underlying uh, database. Let's say, for example, uh, in C uh, SQL uh, Server, you would use a square bracket to specify first space name. In Oracle, it's, I think, somewhat different. So you don't have to worry about knowing uh, those kind of lower level details of your, uh, of your database. In, in, by using a where clause object, you are able to, you're insulated from that, and you can use that exactly uh, in the same way no matter what database product you're using underneath. So how does the where clause object look like? Well, it's nothing but essentially, and where clause objects could essentially contain other where clause objects as well. So here's an example where it's a slightly more complex statement where I say I want to create a where clause which says country equal to USA, state e and state uh, is California, and followed by essentially a or clause um, uh, within that where the name is either Jones uh, or the company name is Jones or contact name is Jones. Well, how do I create that? First of all, we're going to do the first two of these AND clauses, which is country and state. We can simply do what's called W. In this case, I've created an uh, uh, instance called WC. I just do I AND. And I AND takes basically three arguments. Uh, you know, uh, Just like uh, a where clause, it contains the left-hand side, which is usually a field, an operator, like equals to, and then a value, USA, effectively. So you can do essentially, you know, in this particular case, you use the country object, uh, column object, specify the operator equals to and the value USA, and you do two ands for the two particular uh, uh, portions that I have done over here. And then uh, once I've done that, then what I can do is I need to be able to create a sub-object, a sub where clause, and then and it together. So in order to do that, I create a different uh, clause. And I'm sorry, over here it looks like what I've done is com combined uh, uh, VB and, and C-sharp over here. This is a C-sharp syntax where clause WC2 instead of dim WC2. Uh, but anyway, uh, so WC2 is a new where clause. And then I, I or them together effectively, both one for contact name, one for company name. And then I, I and the, the second where clause uh, with this. And then, of course, I can just simply do get records over here. So that's how effectively that I'm able to create more complex uh, where clauses here. Um, similarly, the order by clause has a little bit more of a syntax that you can do, which is now you can essentially, it takes two arguments when you create an instance of order by clause. One is whether to expand the foreign key or not, and whether it is uh, case sensitive, case insensitive or not. So here's an example. If you want to expand the foreign keys, and sort in a case sensitive order, um, you would essentially create that with two, um, with both the arguments being true, and then essentially add any number of uh, any number of uh, sorting criteria. So if you want to sort by contact name first, and then later on you uh, want to sort by last name, uh, sorry, uh, by country, you could just do order by dot add for customer stable dot country comma ascending, and then just do a get records in this particular way. Uh, and finally, the last slide over here that I want to show you about this particular topic is on updating data. Uh, you need to first read it using get record or get records, then call get record with the, the mutable version uh, with the ID, and then save. So in, in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of the records from the database. And for each record, I'm going to actually create a, a, a retrieve an updatable record by just calling get record with the ID of the record uh, that was originally retrieved by get records, followed by true, true being the second par parameter, which is essentially the mutable flag. And then I just simply uh, 
do an error checking and then change the country and, and then save that uh, save that record. 